Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another wrap up. This time is for February. One, two, three, let's go! So in February, that was a weird pronunciation. So February, I read a total of nine books. So four more than last month. That's actually about average of what I read in a month, about nine to 11 books. So, <laughs> like last time, I seem to have stacked them in like size order. So who knows which order I read them. I don't know, doesn't really matter, does it? So let's start from the top. So I read the second book in the Mediator series by Meg Cabot and it's called The Ninth Key. So like I said in the January wrap up, I will be doing a more in-depth summarization of the whole Mediator series. So I won't go into this one now. <laughs> But short summarization, it's about Seuss who is a mediator and a mediator is someone who talks to ghosts if you didn't know that already, which I'm sure you do. So that's basically it. More on that when I finish the other three books in the series. Moving on. So I also read the last three books in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. So it's the Titan's Curse, the Battle of the Labyrinth and the Last Olympian by Rick Ryden. And also like I said in the January wrap up and also like the Mediator series, I will go into these at a different time. But since I have finished this series, hopefully I will do that video soon. I don't know why I'm talking like this. It's just coming out that way. So the Percy Jackson books are about Percy Jackson and his friends who are demigods. And they go on adventures, basically. More or less. <laughs> Save the world. Something, something. Greek mythology. There you go. Moving on, we have the, <laughs> it's not a the, it's a There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. So this book is basically about, well, murders. It's like a YA thriller book thing. Is that, is that a thing? I don't know. Anyway. So, short summarization, in this book, one by one, the student starts dying in a series of gruesome murders. Yeah, basically that's it. So, being a YA book, it is a very easy read, which we like. We like easy reads around here. So the book is gory and creepy and at times it made me wonder if there was like a supernatural element to it. Spoiler, there's not. But that would have been cool. So it's a fast paced and easy read, which bonus points. And it's gory and creepy but not in a, you know, you can't turn the lights off and go to sleep in the dark kind of thing. Well, maybe for some, but not for me. A negative point of the book is that you find out who the killer is quite early on and it doesn't really make the suspense of the story. I mean, the ending had me a bit... Eh. It was very... Oh. Huh. Okay. Alright. But, you know, other than that, it was quite enjoyable if you like these kinds of books. So, for a star rating, I would probably put it at about a 3 star. Maybe a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I mean, would I read it again? Probably. In about a year or two. Or three. Moving on! We have 
One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. Now, this was a book I was quite excited to read. It's a book that has been seen a lot of on Bookstagram, mostly, I think. Yeah, it's one of the books that you see a lot of on Bookstagram. So the premise for it is basically five strangers walk into detention and only four of them walk out again. Apparently the original inspiration for it was The Breakfast Club, where the concept is to bring a bunch of different type of characters in together and make them interact with each other, basically. And... And yeah, that is what I first thought of when strangers walk into detention. Only in The Breakfast Club, all of them walk out. Spoiler for anyone who hasn't seen Breakfast Club. And in this one, only four of them walk out. So it's a YA thriller. That is apparently a thing. Are we calling it that? Or is it just me? I don't know. So every chapter has a different character's point of view. So you kind of follow along and try to solve this mystery that is the death of the fifth student. <laughs> so suspicion is cast around all over the place, presumably to make it more mysterious and deep and, you know, keep the reader guessing. However, I kind of figure out who the killer was very early on and I kind of fit the last pieces together about midway through the book and so I basically just continued reading the book so I would see if I was correct or not which I was so I was kind of disappointed in it uh, especially having seen it around so much and so many people saying how good it was and all that so um, I guess my expectations for it were very high, which is not always the best thing. Although I will say that it was a very easy read and it was fairly enjoyable, even if I had figured out everything so early on. <laughs> it wasn't that hard. So yeah, I did mostly just finish the book to see if I was right or wrong. Which I was, so yeah, slightly disappointed. But what you gonna do? So what would I rate this? I would probably rate it about a 2.5. Cause it wasn't a bad book. It was just that I had too high expectations going in. So it wasn't as enjoyable for me as it maybe could have been. And next up we have Five Feet Apart by Rachel Lippincott, Mickey Daughtry and Tobias Jaconis. I hope I said all those names right. So this is one of those I saw the movie before I read the book. And in this case I think it would be okay because apparently they pitch the movie and book script at the same time. So it's sort of more like... A book made of the movie although it does say soon to be a major motion picture on the cover so I don't know what that says anyway so this story is about Will and Stella who are two teens who fall in love with just a one minor complication they can't get within five feet apart from each other without risking each other's lives so Will and Stella are CFS and if you don't know what CF stands for, it stands for Cystic Fibrosis and to get a more clearer picture of what that is, please google it because I will not be able to describe it correctly. As for the depiction of CF, if it's accurate or not, I wouldn't be able to say but from the little I know of it, I'd say it, sure, yeah, if a bit dramatised for the effect of the story. So as far as the characters, I do feel that they were kind of mature for their age, if a bit obnoxious at times. So from this being a story of sick kids, and it's a book and it's a movie, so is it the next Fault in Our Stars? 
I hope not. So with Fault in Our Stars, I do feel that those characters feel way older than they actually are. Whereas with Five Feet Apart, these characters are more relatable. So having seen the movie before I read the book, what do I think of the book? Well, firstly saying that I did really enjoy the movie. I mean, it did have me crying. And I will say that I am a big crybaby when it comes to that kind of thing. So uh, yeah, that doesn't really say much of what I think thought about a movie. But I really did like the movie. It was like very cinematic in a very nice easy way does that make sense and the book very much follows along the movie so the book in the movie is basically so, so the book is basically like a script of the movie but it's but it's written as a book so don't get me wrong there so what would i rate this book purely based on the fiction and the writing and not taking in it into account if it's an accurate de depiction or not i would probably rate it about a four yes a four next up we have untamed by ag howard now this is a short story collection uh so it's a companion basically to the splintered series which is a series i read last year and the splinter series is basically a retelling of alice in wonderland that's the short of it so in it there are three short stories and in each story a different character is the main character so in one we have Alyssa who is the main character in the Splintered series and so in that short story Alyssa kind of reminisces about what happens after the third book in the series. And in the second one Alyssa's mum is reminiscing about her time in Wonderland. And in the third one we have Morpheus who is well one of Alyssa's boys and his time sort of going into the memories of Alyssa's other boy, Jeb. So, I don't know. As a whole, I didn't really feel like I needed to read these short stories to get, you know, a full story of the whole series. They were kind of useless, in my opinion. I mean, they were, they were easy to read and kind of enjoyable to you know, like continue on with that whole universe world thing that is the retelling of Wonderland basically but could I have lived without reading this yes also I will say that the font in it is blue blue font why That actually made it so much harder for me to read for some reason. I don't know why, but reading blue letters made my eyes and had go. Woo. My eyes did not like the colour of the font. I don't know why. If you do, please let me know why. I'm actually quite curious to find out. But yeah, it did make it harder for me to read than in actually had to be <laughs> so what would I rate this I don't want to put one but a one and a half because it was basically useless I'm sorry I mean the author put down a lot of work with these stories and all that and I do appreciate that it was just that it wasn't really for me I mean other people might really enjoy getting short stories into the world that they liked. I, for some reason, really don't. And it, it's not just this one, it's loads of other series that I've read short stories for that I've been sort of like, all right, why? Why did I have to read this? 
because it was out there and I wanted to. I, I just felt like I needed to and yeah. I mean, it's, it's an easy read, enjoyable. Was it for me? No. I do stand by that I felt like the short stories were kind of useless in a way. Uh, might be for other people, was not for me. And that's fine. We are okay with that. I do still appreciate the author having put down the time to write these little mini stories. So, moving on to the last book of uh, this month's... Why did I do that? So, moving on to the last book of this month's wrap-up. Some words are hard to say. This is also a reread, and it's Eve of Man by Giovanna and Tom Fletcher. So, short summarization of this story is that Eve is the first girl born in 50 years. So, because of that, all her life she's been kept away from everyone. She's been secluded. But at the age of 16, it's time for her to face her destiny. And that means basically three potential males are presented to her and they are to be the future of humanity. So she has always accepted her fate, she knew what her purpose in life was and she was basically fine with it. And that is until she meets Bram. Of course there's a boy involved. So now she wants freedom, she wants control of her own destiny. So what would she choose, love or humanity? And how can she choose between them? So the book starts off quite slow. It's a slow build and it's only until like the second half of the book that it starts being more fast paced. It's very much a insta love kind of a story between Eve and Bram. So Eve is a very much the damsel trapped in her tower, quite literally. <laughs> Because she lives in a tower. Her character, at least in this book, I don't know about the rest because I have not read them yet. And Eve's character in this book is, well, she's kind of weak. She's not that, you know, she's not very empowering to women kind of a character. She's, well, she is that damsel trapped in her tower type of character. Uh, and I'm guessing that is very much due to the fact that she's been in isolation more or less. She hasn't experienced anything in life like any other 16 year old would have at that point. So yeah, she's very much that damsel trapped in a tower character, which I guess is fine for now, but I'm hoping she will evolve more as uh, the series progress. So for the story as a whole, or the book, because it's part one of three, I like the premise of it. I'm just not sure the delivery of it was quite what I would have wanted. But I'm not sure that I would have been able to do a better job myself either, so... I mean... <laughs> It's here. I would have liked to have seen more world building in it. I would have liked to have known more of why the world is the way it is now and what's happened to it uh, more than just the no girl has been born in 50 years part. Yeah. Maybe that will come. I'm not going to judge the series as a whole yet because well, all the books are not out yet, so there we go. Since we know that Eve is the first girl born in 50 years, meaning the second youngest girl or woman is at least 50 years old, meaning it's a very sexless society or there are more male-on-male relationships than we know of 
So it's either male male or unix from all these young boys living in this world. So I have kind of would have liked to see more of the LGBTQ+, plus, at least been mentioned somehow, because now our assumptions are that everyone is either sexless or gay. I mean, both are fine. Some mention of it would have been nice. I mean, I guess it doesn't really add anything to the story, but it kind of goes hand in hand with the whole world building part of it. So, what would I rate this book? So, I will say that I'm a huge fan of both Giovanna and Tom's other works. And I will basically read anything they put out, whatever it may be. So, <laughs> I guess it's hard to say, but I kind of want to give it a 4, or at least a 3.5. I'm not being very generous with the ratings, am I? Or am I being too generous? I don't know. Anyway, it was a reread. I did enjoy it the first time and I did enjoy it the second time around, which was now. Uh, and I did reread this because I have the second book and I want to read that soon. Hopefully next month. So I wanted to dive back into the world as it, as it was. So, uh, yes, uh, this has been another wrap-up video. Stay tuned to see how many books I'll read in March. Yes, in March, because that is next month. I'm so lost. Okay. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Comment, subscribe, like, do all the things. It helps me out and I will love you forever. So until next time, take care. Oh, bye bye.